Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. Da da. Dun dun dun. Welcome back to another project. Getting projects done with me, Chris. Continue on with our pig gator, as I really want to get through this wood that's all over this guy. I really, really, really want to get it done so we can actually sit down and concentrate on the the rider. The rider, we've only gotten just a little bit of his base layer of his flesh down. We're not too concerned. We're just kind of just blocking color in at that point. And yeah, so we are going to continue on. We had done the um, the cage and the brass and all that all over this guy. Mostly happy with it. You know, looks all right. It's pretty quick actually, but that's fine. We're going to continue on with the wood. The goal with the wood is to stay kind of that rich brown, but also shift it uh, a little bit out of the saturation. And that model just went into that fucking paint. He's okay. Ugh, damn bits. <laughs> so yeah, we had mixed up uh, a bit of dryad bark and what was it? Dark Reaper, I think. I think it was Dark Reaper. Huh? I'm gonna get messing this up here. Hold on, hold on. I'm fucking with my eye holes. There we go. Alrighty, Cosmic, hey man, lurking in for a while, waiting on my opponent to show up. Cool, awesome. Today I'm joined by Mr. Barfing Sheep, oh. who's going to sit in the cheerleading section. Are you going to cheer? <laughs> Got your pom-poms? Oh yeah, all ears. <laughs> Why'd you give away your kill? Because bodies tend to change when you grow older. Gotcha. <laughs> That's kind of a dumb question. I was too fat. That was the that was all. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Chunkiness, I hear you. It's a little bit of chunkiness. Was the deciding factor of getting out of kilt wearing, apparently. It was my stage outfit. And there was a lot of that. Cool. Because he doesn't seem to ponder about <laughs> whether or not he's wearing undies. Yeah. Gotcha. It was a 50 50. Or whether or not he was going to whip it out during the show. Or both. Because <laughs> that's the kind of uh, questions I like asked if I was, uh, you know, the front man of something. Is he going to whip it out on us? Is he? Like, we never know. My basically, that's my approach to life, really. <laughs> Is he going to whip it out? Is he going to whip it out? We don't know. We just don't know. We know he's capable of it. We know he's screwy enough in the head to do it. <laughs> but will he? Time will tell. Cosmic, I need a cool name for my game room. You don't want to call it the game room? <laughs> I don't know. Sanctum of Sodomy. <laughs> Sanctum of Sodomy. <laughs> Been going through my diary again? <laughs> oh, no. 
Yeah. Who's that? Yeah, most of them will not be the same because it's Sonic. Oh. God damn it. <laughs> oh. That's not fun. It's just a name. But it's just a name. It's not like it's the rules. It's not like you posted the rules. Name my boss from the uh, Sanctuary, no, not Sanctuary, Church of Nerd. <laughs> Forget the Sanctuary. Edmund Flo, what's up, everybody? What's up? What's up, Edmund Flo? Fancy uh, joining us today. I see. I don't usually read that name in the comments on these streams. Not usually, anyway. Working on anything? Dwarves all the way. Still crushing them dwarves? Yeah. I have a thousand points left. But I'm probably never going to play. I mean, dwarves are just orcs who haven't turned green yet. Well, them's fighting words. Or maybe orcs <laughs> are dwarves. That didn't get their pigment when they were born. <laughs> it's a, it's a different kind of fungi. The one that like a like a cave shroom. That's dwarfs. A cave shroom. Yeah, because they just sprout out of the out of the rock, don't they? <laughs> well, orcs just sprout out of wherever the fuck. <laughs> I mean, orcs are mushrooms. Yeah. Orcs are the ultimate vegans. <laughs> that kind of put a chill on my spine. That's all right. I'm good for that. Go eat that boss over vegan. <laughs> I don't know why Lemmy just turned vegan right there. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching The Witcher and the dwarves are my biggest experts. Well, I haven't seen yet. You haven't watched the new season yet either. I just got through... I think I got through episode 7 of the new season. I'm gonna be honest, I like season 1 better. Well, they're not just releasing episodes. They're just releasing the whole thing. Uh... I don't know. There's eight episodes available right now. I'm assuming it's the whole season. Because that's how long season one is. I'm just kind of chilling until my opponent gets here. What you playing? 40k. Cool. What do you play? I have Black Legion uh, that I'm testing out for LVO. He's bringing Grey Knights, I think. I don't know how competitive his list is. I'm just, I need repetitions with my list, so. that I have a full game room at home so it's easier to get things
What about Sodomus Sanctorum? Yeah. I feel like <laughs> the entire focus here is sodomy. <laughs> <laughs> it could be that idea. Okay, well, when you are achieving victory over your opponent, do you not say, oh, he's taking it in the ass? I absolutely do not say that. Oh. Must be just circles I run in then. Your circles that you run in are squares, though, aren't they? Uh, takes longer to get around stuff. But you gotta make a bigger circle. Would you describe a bigger circle as gaping? I describe it loosely. <laughs> loosely, eh? Okay. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I'm getting sweaty and moist over there. Yeah, I'll bet. I hear you loud and clear. Oh, uh, I'll Google the term. <laughs> if it was one. Was your Cyprus Sodomus Sanctorum? <laughs> yeah, why? Is that a real name? No. Uh, it is, it's a really good band name. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of questions about what kind of music they play. <laughs> uh, the really fun kind. Death metal about taking it up the arse. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, it is. <laughs> it's like 23 degrees in my house. Oof. That's, that's, that sounds a little ripe. Yeah. I usually keep it around 22. And then all of the locals get confused because I use Celsius. Because you use what? Celsius. Oh. Instead of freedom units? Freedom units. Nonsensical unit of temperature measurement. Oh, wait. Are you in Canada or are you in the States? America. You're in America? Okay. Do scientists since you use Celsius? <laughs> no, I'm just logical. Ah, nice. He likes standardized units of measurement. Yeah. I mean, I, I've always been confused my entire life about why water boils at 212. I'm like, but in Celsius, it's 100. Why yeah. can't we just use 100? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty straightforward, right? 100 boils, zero freezes. I'm still confused by the fact that Games Workshop uses inches for their measurement in their games, too. Like, um, Not all the games, because like Battlefleet Gothic and Epic, they used centimeters. Do they? Yep. Okay. I haven't played those, but I've always been intrigued by the fact that a UK games company was using inches. Yeah. It's always weird. I don't know. I still get fucking confused when people are talking about, like, uh, weight, and they're talking about, yeah, he's 12 pounds and, two, and three stone. I'm like, what the fuck is stone? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. When when people talk about weight, I just tell them I'm fat and just leave it at that. <laughs> I'm kind of husky. Ooh. Fluffy. Fluffy. Husky. Yeah. Now give me that second seat on the plane. <laughs> I got my winter coat on. Yeah. <laughs> Ebb and flow. It's been years. Uh, last time I shared you a picture of a rooster and some juggling tools. You probably don't remember. No. A rooster and juggling tools? I think I would remember that, but apparently not. That sounds fairly distinct. Yeah. I don't remember that. Sure it was me, bud, that you shared that with? Because I, I, I think I would remember a rooster and juggling tools. Unless, of course, rooster and juggling tools is a euphemism for something. Although I don't know what that would be a euphemism for. A rooster and juggling tool. Well, what's a rooster uh, euphemism for? Wolves. There you go. Yeah. It's cock and balls. 
He sent me a picture of cock and balls. That's what it is. He sh- yeah, I do remember. <laughs> <laughs> Looks up at the poster on the wall. I do remember. I do remember now, yes. Cock and balls. <laughs> I never forget a cock and ball. <laughs> Kim, hey, hey, Sir Peanut Butter, subscribe. Holy shit, 26 months? Good God, man. Subscribe with the Twitch Primes. Monkey emoji, I think. Is that what that is? It's a monkey emoji. One stone is 6.35 kilos. Almost six and a half kilograms. Right, so, like, why say, like, you know, he's fucking, you know, 300 kilos. Not 300 kilos, fuck. Gotta be gen- ginormous. Oh, I'll give you two stone of chicken for that. Yeah, like... Like it sounds like it's that old timey kind of unit of measurement, right? What? <laughs> well, seeing as you jumped into the conversation late, Boop, um, we're talking about like uh, stone in units of measurement. We were talking about basically Fahrenheit versus Celsius and Imperial versus metric. But how the UK, the games, the companies in the UK, but the games they make. Uh, are a lot of them are in imperial but i was saying that some of them were in centimeters and then you know i don't know the uk is an interesting place because yeah they, they use stone as a unit of measurement like of weight that's all <laughs> and now you know I don't even know what color this is. I don't even know how to describe this color. Oh. Yeah, it's it's a color. It definitely is a color. Alright, I'm gonna duck it. Late <laughs> right <laughs> right I forgot yes and if you disagree um, we'll magically find a oil well in the backyard yeah exactly <laughs> that's the America we all know and love them folks got Earl in the back Earl 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 Kim, I've only heard UK guys use that measure. We only use Imperial for lumber stuff and Warhammer. Other than that, it's metric. Yeah, for like in Canada, like we, we do a combination of metric and Imperial. Like our weight, we're often referring to pound rather than kilo. Distance, though, we refer to kilo. Or time, actually. We refer to time. So, like, for example, uh, somebody who's driving from Toronto to London, Ontario, it's uh, it's roughly a less than two-hour drive. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 a, that's one way that Canadians measure distance is time. Well, they do that in the U.S. too. That's also how um, we measure uh, quality of food. Quality of food. All Chinese takeout for ten minutes. Where is the tape? Uh, but what what does the time indicate? How long it lasts, or how long till you're on the how shitter? How long? How long you got? How when when you have to leave for the stores? Oh. Uh, or for the takeout. Oh. So if they say ten minutes. Gotcha. You have 10 minutes to get there. It's uh, what time should I leave to get there? Not how long you have. Yeah. You need time to do this. Uh, Two hour drive. 10 minutes. (laughs) The the Chinese takeout lady says 10 minutes. That means you should leave about 
two minutes before it's done. <laughs> Which is a couple blocks to drive. Got done watching Jimmy Carr Netflix. What's that? Jimmy Carr is a comedian. That's what's fucking. He laughs like a fucking magpie. Yeah. Laughs like a um, magpie. <clears throat> yeah, and he described Canadians as unarmed Americans. <laughs> that's that's a myth. Because a lot of Canadians are armed. Damn, you got two right there. This could be fake, though. Those aren't those two arms you got right there could be fake. Could be. Could just be wax little sticks. They could be. Like, have you I seen how much hunting goes on in this country? Last voice of, like, a magpie. Huh? Have I what? Have you seen how much hunting goes on here? Yes. No, I'm aware. There's plenty of guns. I know. I was just being, I was reciting the joke. Well, it's not funny. I take personal offense to it. Yeah. I'm offended. Well, I'm offended. Ready? 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 I'm going to give you the correct American response. Uh, blow it out your ass. <laughs> <laughs> What's not funny? What's not funny? I'm offended. I'm offended. <laughs> this is the authentic experience here. <laughs> <laughs> Having some sort of experience. recently um not shaved my face but maintained my beard and I now officially have the Captain Price chop <laughs> sweet yeah now I gotta get beard oil cause I gotta like straighten it out cause no more no more, no more soap and conditioner doesn't work I do beard oil, but there's like. You don't have to wear that for your face now. Balm or whatever to keep the. Beard balm? Yeah, it's just it keeps the hairs from like getting like curly and like pointing out everywhere like you got freaking electrocuted. Yeah, because my beard right now looks like a. The doc from uh, Back to the Future, you know? Doc Brown? You know, fucking sticking out everywhere. Yeah. Doc Brown. Can you name the yeah. actor who plays Doc Brown? Uh, old fart. <laughs> so, no? Just you can you can just say I don't know. It's okay to say I don't know. No, I have a feeling there's been two actors that played Doc Brown. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Let me look it up. No, I'm pretty. I'm, the actor's name is Christopher Lloyd. I'm pretty sure it's only one actor who's played Doc Brown. Pretty sure. Unless there's some goofy show that he did or they tried to do. So 
some of these areas are a, a bitch to get to. Yeah, I'm thinking if I had to plan this out a little bit better, I probably should have started with a mid-tone gray. Use a little bit of brown, create some depth and shadow. Quick dry brush of a really light gray, and then hit this with the final wash. Just to pick out all the wood texture and everything. That's what I'm thinking now. Should have been smarter. Why weren't there more? Dude, why were you just staring at the sky? I know. Mm. So I did a groundbreaking discovery today. Where I've had a PD backstage amp, a wee guitar amplifier, for 13 years. <clears throat> and I've always thought it, it doesn't really have the oomph that I need. Uh, turns out you can just pull out one of the knobs and there's an overdrive in it. It turns into the angriest fucking amp I've heard in ages. 13 fucking years. And I'm discovering it now. Do you feel like maybe you wasted your life? No. <laughs> I've got no regrets. I'm just happy I have it. No regrets? No regrets. No regrets. <laughs> no, it sounds amazing. I thought it was like, oh, it's it's a, it's a bit broken, and you know, it was apparently stolen from someone and then given to me. But now that I have that, it's like, fuck, I don't need a, I don't need more shit. I could just do that little bloop bloop. Suddenly, there's metal in that. Um, I, got, I got like a teeny tiny tube amp with uh, lots of boxes and shit to get good sound, but now it needs a drill. It's a real game changer. Oh yeah. Game been changed. I've been playing all day. You usually use it as a bass amp. And I was just fiddling around because the sound went a bit weird, and then I just pulled on all the uh, all the knobs hey, hey. to see if there was anything wrong with the potentiometers, and then suddenly it went. Boop. And I got amazing sound. <clears throat> Today, I went to a deli. And even though I had tested negative, COVID, I didn't go in. Um, they had this awesome thing that they started doing because of COVID where um, I can call, place an order, show up, and then they just put it in the back of my car. Curbside pickup? Uh, Sophie Wow. Hey everyone, greetings Mighty Chris. Greetings Sophie. Kim says, Boop, turn up your volume. Can't hear you at all. Just mumbling. No, I'm sorry, it's at maximum input. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Sorry, Kim, yeah. it's, uh, it's at maximum input on Discord. <laughs> you change your batteries. Uh, I could, no, this is a plug in mic. I could get a better mic. No, maybe your battery is better. You're low. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kim, are you getting close to finishing the pig gator? I'm pretty darn close to the gator himself. Yeah, it's just the wood 
some details. I still want to finish off these claws and maybe the quills with something. I don't know. But yeah, he we're, we're nearing the end for the pig gator. And then, of course, the rider himself. It shouldn't take too long. I don't think. I don't know. It all depends. It all depends on what we do. How far we want to push it. I had no intention, really, of going to this depth on this figure. But here we are. Here we are. Ooh, I also broke down. Um, I over at Christmas for my birthday, I got a gift card. Can't afford to buy. I bought the third edition made to order minis. The Space Marines and the Dark Eldar? Yeah, I wanted the Dark Eldar on them. Isn't that sounds pretty cheap? <coughs> it's like a hundred bucks. Ooh, not for me. I was like, I wanted the Dark Eldar. I was like, screw it. All tech sold up, and I was like, I want it. For me, it costs just as much as a uh, chocolate cake. More than a hundred dollars? No, wait. What do I mean? Couldn't think of a good one. Uh, for me, it's uh, 75 US. <laughs> yeah, and the Indomitus box was like uh, $140. I don't know why. Kim probably has an answer for that. Why we get cheaper boxes. I don't know. Yeah, it's a cheap box. Probably your geographical distance to uh, England. I have no idea. I would assume it's the currency. I know they try and justify the slightly higher converted prices in North America because they have a North American one to have. Money. Taxes, money, profit, all that stuff. <clears throat> yeah. No, uh, Australia also got, got those prices. Just as good. Because, like, not only are, like, their minis fat, <laughs> they get, I don't know, if you, you know, if you take them, they're freaking, yeah. I don't know how Australians can afford to play for each other. Um, okay, hey, yeah, a bit mixed here, but also changing generally, but land area generally, acres and height in feet. Young kids, mainly metric. Sophie, you're weapon mad over there. Don't need a rifle to hunt. You just use an elk-seeking missile. More better to use a pair or arrow and do it old school. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of bow hunting around here. Yeah, lots of bow hunting. So they can war hog. <laughs> so I'm not advocating war or warfare or anything like that, but. That is a beautiful machine. What's that? Uh, the A10 Warthog the plane. It's, oh. uh, it's a Gatling gun built around the plane. Yeah. Or with a yeah, with an airplane built around the plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a really cool plane. They keep trying to retire it, and they keep finding reasons to keep it in service. Oh, it's a great attack vehicle. That's what the A stands for. I learned that three days ago. <laughs> okay. Like the the prefixes on uh, planes, like F thirty five A ten Warthog, <laughs> B fifty two. 
my eyes or my brain was like, what the fuck? Yes, it makes so much sense. <laughs> Anybody got or New Year's Eve? Anybody got plans? Nope. Chilling out with friends and family. Oh, dead like your mom. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 I can never, I can never keep a straight on these. I'm, I'm a terrible comedian. <laughs> <laughs> Just laugh at my own jokes as soon as they come out. Oh, I'm gonna chill with friends playing some board games. Sir Peanut Butter. Ah, yes, the ancient art of elk hunting with a pear. <laughs> Spear. Oh, well, pear would be more sporting. Ebb and flow. The elk are in for a world of hurt if you miss the partridge in that pear tree. <gasps> Kim. I build a sludge raker and what's it called? Pig gator, but still got. To do the rider, and I built the Slogoth mash crawler thing too. I'm going to start planting them in a few days, I think, when all this Christmas and New Year's shit is done. Can't wait to get it back to my painting routine. I have not painted anything since the 21st of December. I'm dying here. Jeez, really? Well, wow, that's a long time to go, man. Uh, even I will get a little bit from that. Yeah, but Kim paints a lot. Yeah. So I'd, so I'd imagine he's kind of like a, a you, when you see a fish out of water and you see their mouth just kind of opening and closing, yeah. you know? That's Kim right now. He's just... <gasps> Scratch me as I'm going, got anything I can think. <laughs> yeah, like a crackhead out there. I'll suck your dick if I can base coach your mini. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if Kim's doing that, but... Considering how expensive the puppy is. You never know, right? Yeah. You're out there sucking dick. You see the new Ultramarine? <laughs> it was elk and expensive. Hey guys, if you ever want to know what Chris does on the uh, Dave Dukaski stream, he's telling you. <laughs> yeah, that's how you go up a massive weight load thing, isn't it? Yeah. How the fuck do you think you afford to pay a band play? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Reach to it. Not getting this one from San Diego for free. Because <laughs> <laughs> you tripped the lottery. <laughs> yep. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> You want to get shit in real life, man. That's how you got to do it. Sometimes you got to suck a dick to know you don't want to suck a dick. You know, that's a fair point. <laughs> like, ah, it's not for me. Sorry. <laughs> Hold on. Let me pop <laughs> this out of my mouth. Yeah, this is not for me. I'll go to the workhouse like the rest of the elves. Yeah. Exactly. Why wouldn't I want to 
maybe this is the cuz I wanted the dark outline. Wish I didn't have to get it with the placement that we have with the Chicago Cubs and four A team for us to be mixed up in this one big deal. Look at our robot. So Yeah, there you go. A Dio Ramba. You don't even have to glue the marines together, you can just spread them out and go blood put the blood guns. Aren't those space marines press fit as well? Never mind. No. No? I thought they were. Aren't they like, yeah, they're the old, old ones. Or is that the Assault on Black Reach I'm thinking of? You're just thinking of Assault on Black Reach. These ones are like single marine on a single screw. Oh, they're like the normal space marines then? They're like the, they're the current assault group. Oh, they are, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, the current they were like, space marines. Like everybody's like, oh, they updated. Uh, no, they just it's like with cow stuff, like cow suit sculpts or the same, and or cow crisis suits are the same. They just added more bits in them. The space marines have been the same about third edition. Uh, they just Aren't changed they... it on the screw. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, there's there's space well, marines like there's first form space marines you can get right now at a DW. Same ones they've had like third edition because they keep them fit onto the screw. They have not substantially changed the act physical sculpt look. Oh, same front. Same same with the fire warriors. Same body. All they did was add more weapon options. And fancy shoulder pads. Didn't they do <clears throat> the crisis suits? Didn't they just give them more round shoulder pads than armor pieces? They gave them like shoulder pads you can glue onto their shoulders. Didn't substantially change the sculpt. People are like, "Oh, the crisis suit suit's got a new sculpt." And I looked at it. I'm like, "That's not a new sculpt. That's that's bits on a screw that you put on there to make it look like a sculpt." I think they look way better with the more rounded armor parts. Fuck, I have like a, I don't know, 2,000 point cow armor and you gave it away. Why for? Because I, I was never playing and he really wanted the cow. So I was like, okay, take it off. He didn't want to paint, so I was like, yeah, hey, here you go, play. Well, that's a mighty bigger, yeah? And I do it again! Because my... Uh, Fucking 10,000 points of resin guard. Oh, no, they did change the crisis suit sculpt. Yeah. Well, they didn't change it. One of the one of, one of the three sculpts is the same sculpt they used. Then they've added two more sculpts to that three, three unipot, or three two pot. Because the, you have, one of them has the normal legs, but this other two have the, uh, the legs. They, they change from the, only the one of the ghost kids. One of the crisis suits is the old one with fucking shit to put on. Painted a, <clears throat> I got a riptide, and after that I was like, okay, I'm done with cow. Painted everything steampunk. Everybody's freaking their entire stuff before, but they're like, if play anything other than knights or a lot of vehicles, not that scary. No. Because uh, people forget that it's one shot. I mean, it does three more in, so, um, but it can't kill more than three, or no, three, four one-wing models. 
to work in this class. So it just treats your unit primarily. It can only ever kill, operate, kill two. A lot of people confuse the Age of Sigmar rules and the rules for 40k. Where aside from mortal wounds, uh, you cannot kill more models than you have shots or attacks. So if your gun shoots once, you can only ever kill one model, no matter how much they suck. Yeah, because wounds don't spill over. Yeah, wounds don't. The only thing that spills over is mortal wounds. Or the uh, fucking flail thingy from uh, Death Guard. Mortal wounds, and if you have a weapon profile that specifically states yeah. wounds all over, you can only ever kill two primary space wounds with that weapon. Unless they give it some weakness if it's a gun. But they showed the profile and I'm guessing it was the whole weapon profile and it didn't look like it had seven new wounds, so I don't know. So they might be changing the ion cannon to be more like the uh, blast weapon. I guess you could say, where it's more towards like larger units of smaller Look at the Ex Machinator. Machinator? The fucking thing is riding is terrifying. What's it called? Like a demon horse thing. Like a spider thingy. <laughs> spider thingy? Yeah, it's very arachnoid. Even though it's just, it's just got six legs. Sir Peanut Butter, the Forge World price thing still rustles my jimmies. <laughs> what? We Sophie, that, like, it's... Fucking, like, oh. Sophie, is Forge World doing everything in fine cast resin? Uh, not that I know of. No, it's their own resin. Yeah, it's Forge always been this... To the fine cast, like, resin. No. I think the fine cast resin, I mean, like, that was a... A solution to a particular problem, I think. According to somebody who worked in DW, most of the area didn't want fine cast resin. So there's, it was designed to be a quote unquote lightweight, flexible resin that could be poured into the metal mold. Yeah. It's what they did. Yeah, no, that is. Yeah. That's what they did. Explaining it. Yeah, perfect. And then on. The Forge World resin has always been the Forge World resin. They just use a traditional, what everybody else, I guess, uses for resin. Yeah, it's it's just a, um, oh, fuck, I can't remember what grade it's called, but it's it's a softer curing resin. I can't remember what it's called. It has, a, it has an industry standard kind of name to it. But anyway, yeah. I will say that with fine cast, sculpts that they designed specifically for fine cast, i.e. things like fly marbo, have been a hundred times better than the freaking models they just poured their resin in freaking normal. Marble is a, a lot easier to clean up. Like gate and flash locks and things like uh, tail bar ranges. What else? Freaking flash. Oh, like freaking freaking uh, far sight. Oh. Mm-hmm. 
Let's try it again. I'm gonna use this battle suit right here for Elbar. Oh yeah, the melee man. Somebody gave him a race bag as well. That's pretty cool. I wonder if they have. I think it's supposed to be like what Titan Swords, the uh, Death Watch charges and shit, and uh, like character like Artemis has, where it's like the Necron like Getty sword or some shit. I think it's supposed to be like a Necron sword. I almost forgot that the uh, those guys existed. I was on GW site today. I was tempted to fight Tabitha. But I really like Tabitha. But I don't have a I don't have any kind of thing for Captain Tabitha that has Titan and Jack. Where the hell am I? Sir Peanut Butter, honestly, being recently considering getting into Gunpla and compared to what Bandai provides for price versus GW, I feel dirty buying anything from GW. For Gunpla? I mean, it depends on what you want to do for guns. Kit. Yeah, there's some expensive kits. I mean, like, the more complex a kit gets, the more expensive it gets. But, I mean, yeah, get, if you want to get into Gunpla, yeah, get, get into Gunpla. Um, it's just model making, listen, really. Don't listen to people that buy just standard, you know, high-grade kit that's, like, $20 and go, oh, this is cheap, because um, you can go down the rabbit hole and spend fucking... <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Huck, hey, talking to Dave, and they're doing a Stormbird, and wow, pricey, he just did his first Gundam, and it's pretty cool, actually. That's cool. Kim, the nicer Gundam kits is a bit pricey for one model, but if you compare the amount of plastic you get in the box, it is much cheaper than GW stuff, gram for gram in weight. Yeah, I'd believe that. Sophie, I'm thinking of increasing my Tamiya model collection. Some great model kits there. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I have one that I started working on. I haven't gotten back to yet from Tim, from Tamaya. It's the uh, Walker Bulldog. Hold on here. I'm going to grab the box and you can see my face here. I yeah, I have this kit here. Oh, fuck. Scale. This one. The scale bigger than 135th. It is a freaking huge ass like Tamiya kit. Yeah. That builds an M1 Abrams the size of a small dog. <laughs> I have yet to finish this one. Yeah, I just I haven't I haven't finished mine just because just haven't gotten around to it and you know yeah. usually know, doing I, this I, stuff on stream. I like doing traditional like scale model kits. And I got this one because I was like, oh yeah, this is cool. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was cool until I started clipping off pieces and putting it together and realized that like I'm literally building like the controls inside of the freaking tank. Yeah. Like attaching joysticks to the frame. I was like, oh, this is, uh, yeah, no. Yeah, that's scale modeling, man. No, I know. It's just, this is bigger. Like, the biggest I've normally ever gotten is like 135th. This thing's bigger than that. And it's like, it's a small dog. Like, you could put it on your desk and probably take it like it's work. <laughs> Put some electronics in it and drive it around. 
Probably could. It's probably big enough that you could fit it one of those tank models that we can drive. In. You ever see that one there? One fella did uh, Land Raider. Made it RC. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. You see that kind of crap, and you're like, "Fuck! I should do. I should do something like that. That'd be fun." They make kits you can buy. That um, there's a lot of like UK and Japanese uh, model make model companies that make kits like that. Land Raiders. And not Land Raiders, but like that's what I want. Model kits. I want a fucking Land Raider. Overseas stuff you need to make RC or make them RC. And uh, they're used, and some of them are also. Uh, basically a scale model but instead of plastic you just bring together actual metal ooh that's cool yeah. fucking metal and they also <laughs> weigh quite a bit like there's some like some uh, like events museums have where they uh, drive tanks around and stuff um, those people that build those metal tank models that drive around remote control bring them to the to uh, events like that and they have to bring them in on trailers they're so heavy you can't like physically pick them up and put them in the car they have to come into the trailer and have to drive them off the town that's funny so it's not the boss it's like bat- yeah it's like battle <laughs> I would think maybe even like heavier than battle <laughs> that's cool though you would be fun to have a little Lehman Russ or Rhino even just bomb around and do jumps with. <laughs> yeah. Go, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, man. And it's the kind it, it's the kind of shit, you know, that I I talk about it all the time that, you know, I wish is this is the kind of shit we had when we were young have been fucking great action figures and toys and you know what I mean like I'd have been a happy dude if that were the case in my youth I mean my youth was kind of kick ass anyway but yeah I wish I had all this stuff but my youth was pretty kick ass <laughs> <laughs> jelly nah I'm just uh Trying to comprehend your mental gymnastics of being like, oh, kids got it cool. Like, oh, I was pretty kick ass back in the day. Well, because it's, it's, it's just different. And yeah, I mean, like, you know, I mean, we're talking shit, but yeah. Uh, Sophie, the Tamaya tank range at 135, the scale will be good to use your airbrush on, Chris. I have someone to do a huge scale Millennium Falcon with all the interior done with working lights and everything. Oh, cool. Is that, you, you say you're working with that? Oh, you've seen someone do it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, there's a 172 scale Millennium Falcon done by Bandai. I would love to get that kit. It's a little bit pricey though. Just look up Bandai. Um, I think it's called Perfect Grade, I think. Millennium Falcon. You limber up your draw muscles for that one. Mm-hmm. But look at the price for it. And uh, you'll see why you have to limber up. Because <laughs> you bas- you basically are going to be going in, Honey, can I get that model? <laughs> 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 but honey, I need it. <laughs> Anyway, (laughs) 
All right. I'm mostly happy with where the wood is at at the moment. I think I want to do one more edge of a lighter gray. But I kind of want to shade it. I'm not sure what I should shade it with. I'm almost tempted to go with black. Just to make it really, really dark. But I don't want to make it so dark that I lose all the highlights and transition that I made. Maybe I should just use Agrax or shade. Something that'll just fall within the recesses but tint the overall surface a bit. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I'll just use Agrax. Um, Kim. I want the Lego Millennium Falcon in the collector range, but it's 700 euros. Whew, wow. Yep. That's a that's that's a thousand bucks in Kanaka bucks. That's an actual. Bucks. Yeah, that's a dollar amount here. Okay, it's from Kanaka town. Yeah, it's just like in Australia they have dollar adus. Well, we have Kanaka bucks. They have uh, oil rigs. <laughs> There's oil everywhere, man. He pointed out on a map. <laughs> in Kanukistan? Oh, yeah. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> Oi. Who James D. The DM. Subscribe. Oh, over on YouTube. Fuck, I'm not on YouTube, am I? Somebody, somebody mind checking for me? <clears throat> All right, so we're going to use regular old Agrax Earthshade, and we're just going to apply this somewhat generously onto the surface just to resaturate some of that brown, get some of the dark values in the uh, wood grain, and then I think we'll come back and just do a very light, light, light little dry brush, I think. Just on the no, ends. Or maybe just an edge. Yeah, probably just an edge highlight. What's that? You're not live on YouTube. Oh, no? Okay. Sweet. Like you say, you're a bad streamer, but you've got a good hang on this. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I, I fail upwards. <laughs> Sophie, 349.99 British pound. Ouch, too much. Yeah. Oh, yeah, did you look up the Millennium Falcon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the Bandai? Yeah. Kim, sorry, it's 1,300 Lego. euros. Oh, is she talking about the, the Lego or the Bandai? I don't know which one yeah, she's talking Lego. about. It's the Lego one. Oh. Lego is probably out of print. Cause Lego, Lego going out of print, like, screwed up the price so much. Like, all the Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings like Legos are, like, super, super fucked. Super? Yeah, like, they're wanting, like, you know, almost a grand for some of these little Lego, like the little ones. Yeah. Well, they are kind of collector's pieces after a while, right? I don't know if that's working out very well. Yeah, I think that's okay. I 
think once it's dry, it looks a lot better. Give that a sec to dry. Um, ba -dum -bum, bum -bum -bum. Sophie, Bandai and eBay. Oh, the, the Millennium Falcon Bandai? Yeah. Huckahey, yeah, the Falcon is 800 here. Oof. I I assume we're talking about the Bandai, not the Lego. I don't know, because we jumped in with both, so I don't know which one we're talking about here. Uh, OTS also at 400. Kim, pose the Lego in Discord. It's turned out to a... Turned out to a price of 1587 euros when I put the price in the converter. Oof. Yeah, you really have to love your Lego Star Wars if that's the case. You're spending that kind of kind of coin on uh on Lego. I don't know I if I could. My tax returns on those. What's that? I almost put my tax returns on it. On Lego, yeah. Yeah, on the big millennium Falcon, I was like, nah, nah. Do you regret it? No. <laughs> I'm a man of pure regrets. <laughs> regrets? Yeah, it got done. <laughs> Who has time to regret? Lifespan is just a fucking blink. Very true. Not to get all uh, Alan Watts, but you know, just fucking do shit you like. Don't regret stuff. Very true. Um, -dee -ba -dee -ba -dee -ba -dee -ba -dee -ba Kim, I really want, I really want it. I have a friend with a shop here in town and has it in stock. Oof. Yeah, you'll be, he'll be, he'll be your best friend if you buy it off him. <laughs> Sophie, I have an old AMT Star Trek models of the O1 Enterprise and B and C DS9 station and a runabout I've managed to pick up. Really? Wow. That's, um. Uh, that's pretty cool. Those those are some kits. Um, occasionally, I have a look around and I see if I can find um, a Defiant. I can't remember what scale it's supposed to be, but yeah. From that era. I'm pretty sure it's an AMT model. Or EM. Is it EMT or AMT? AMT, I believe, yeah. Yeah, I have a peek around every once in a while. Because I do enjoy them old Star Trek kits every once in a while. Pretty sure I've mentioned it before, but that's pretty much what got me into this silliness. Those Star Trek model kits. Do miss them sometimes. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, I think I like that Agrax Earthshake glaze on top of the wood a lot better. It brings a little bit of that brown quality back into the wood. You can see, like, really it was kind of shifting towards that Dark Reaper. And it's kind of blending into the bronze, the verdigris on the bronze, just because it has that dark off blue-green quality to it. And so slapping the Agrax Earthshade on 
pushes it back towards more of a brown, which I'm digging. Yeah, I like it. Me like it. Um, ba -dee -dee -doo, ba -dee -ba -dee -ba -dee Green leaf terrain, Chris, Chris, Chris. Oh my gushness, gushness. You have some sexy hands. <laughs> okay. Kim, he gave me a TIE Fighter Lego head for my last birthday. It's really cool. TIE Fighter Lego head? Oh, I think i seen that on your shelf. You posted a picture one time of your area and you had a few of those Lego things. Because I thought I'd seen... It, it's the black TIE Fighter he helmet, right? And I thought I also saw a Boba Fett. Unless, of course, I'm mistaken. Which I probably am. Green Leaf Terrain. Thanks for keeping them naked. <laughs> what? Sophie. It is... I want that one, too. <laughs> Hucka hey. We watched the new Book of Boba Fett on Disney last night. So we will see how that develops. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was really fun. I liked... Uh, spoiler. I liked how it kind of... Um, you know, starts off with kind of, you know, how Boba Fett manages to escape the Sarlacc. I like that. That's fun. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there who are, you know, wondering how they were going to go about explaining how he survives kind of thing. Did you guys watch uh, Book of Boba? Nope. Not yet. It's fun. So far. It's only one episode. But yeah. I'm in. Again, like I said, I'm not the biggest Boba Fett fan. So, like, you know, it's not like I'm like, whoa, you know, holy moly, it's Boba Fett. Yay. You know, but, like, I give a fuck. I have to watch it. I watch. Yeah, it's just one episode. It just came out yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, with this final glaze of Agrax Earthshade, it does help with the wood. Probably could have done the same thing with contrast, but the GW shade washes tend to finish not as saturated as contrast. And I just don't want to fight with the color that I've already kind of established here. Um bidi bee boo bidi 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 Where the hell am I? Comments are flying by here. Uh, Sir Peanut Butter, I did. First ep was okay. I had a few issues with some of the direction and choreography. With the direction and choreography? Um, I mean, nothing like that kind of stood out to me. Uh, again, I don't have expectations. And I think where a lot of people are drawing a lot of criticism is because they have expectations of what this character is going to be doing. And I think people will enjoy it a lot more if you just give up whatever you think you know about Boba Fett and just enjoy the journey. I think you'd be a lot happier with it. And as far as the... What, what's that? That's how I felt about the new trilogy. Yeah, when I first watched the new trilogy, I, at first I was like, yeah, they're not bad. Are they as good as the originals or even the prequels? Yeah. Not really, but, you know, different direction. And, of course, once seeing all three and viewing them as, you know, a collective set like that, um, yeah, you definitely see that, you know, the, the, the big contrast is the lack of um, 
cohesive direction for all three of these movies. Like, there was no idea where the freaking story was going to go. You know? Again, it, it was one of those um, too many cooks in the kitchen kind of thing. Which will always hurt the creative process. Um, bleep, 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 bleep. Okay, hey, trying to be a nice guy. Uh -huh. Sophie, saw, uh, yeah, saw it Wednesday afternoon. It's not bad. We'll be watching it. Yeah, so far, I mean, like, I enjoyed it. Uh, I liked, um, I really kind of, you know, like getting back into, you know, how he kind of gets out. Now, what I, what I would like to know is how long was Boba in the pit before, you know, he got out like how much time went by and i would assume that he had his fucked up appearance is because he was getting digested i would assume so which means that he was probably down there for a bit greenleaf terrain he is old white and out of shape cure tank after a beatdown he is a hurting unit plato skin quite the descriptions <laughs> kim uh yeah i've only got the black tie fighter helmet i was uh i'm getting the boba fett one for my birthday next friday as a present for myself oh okay cool i thought i thought you had a, a boba fett because i thought you had two helmet two lego helmets because i remember they're like sitting on top of your bookshelf right or something like that they're up on a high shelf at least from the picture i remember but anyway yeah uh huck hey New York East here in NYE here in Australia and a hot 38 COVID kind of stuff and things, but hope you all have a good NYE tomorrow and a cool 2020. New Year's Eve. Huh? New Year's Eve. Oh, New Year's Eve. Is that what that is? Oh, fuck. I don't know. I'm assuming. I'm assuming. Well, works for me. <laughs> We're just going to say, yeah. Yeah. Skeletor. <laughs> Fuck, I'm gonna do that now. Happy Year. Happy Year. Happy Year, he man. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> when what what when we end the, when we end the show today, you gotta give us a uh, uh, Skeletor quote in that voice. Isn't it just yeah, he man, all the time? No, but I mean, he can say something, right? I mean. Oh yeah. And there's a there's a, a huge meme that goes around right now that of Skeletor and you know his basically basically it's his lessons kind of thing. Yeah, anyway. Until yeah, the until next time. Yeah, yeah. until next time. Yeah. <laughs> Kim got some Joker and Harley Quinn porcelain statues beside the Lego helmet on my shelf and Mickey Mouse skull. <laughs> Mickey Mouse skull, nice. Oh. <laughs> Sophie Wa. I'm more a Trek fan than Star Wars, but the movies and TV shows are good and nice games like Legion and Models. Yeah, I'm. I don't know if I'm more. Of, I don't know if I consider myself more of a Trek fan than a Star Wars fan. I'm. I'm kind of middle of the road as far as that's concerned. I, you know, I enjoy Star Trek. I, I watch all Star Trek. I've seen all the movies. Seen all the shows. Currently watching the new one. You know. I wish there was a decent Star Trek game. Kind of like the old pen and paints, pen and paper game way back in the day, Starfleet Battles. There was that Attack Wing, but I don't know that one. That one, a lot of people were telling me that it was because it was built off the uh, X-wing miniature game mechanic, which works better for starships as opposed or spaceships like fighters as opposed to you know capital ships kind of thing. I don't know. That's the way I heard it compared to. But yeah. Big fan of those games. Just playing in Armada. Yeah. I would say that I enjoy those more than uh, Warhammer. Those games, yeah. Why is that? I'm not sure. 
Okay. I don't know. It depends on who you play with. Because I'm, I'm not a very competitive person at all. So if I end up playing playing Warhammer with someone that is super competitive and really has to, and <clears throat> I'm basically a guinea pig for their super duper tournament list, it can sometimes be a bit boring for me. Right. I used to be into competitive wargaming. Not no more. It really basically was once I kind of just grew out of that desire to, I don't know, be number one in this. Uh, kind of, you know, just doesn't really make a lot of sense. To me, you know, the whole playing Warhammer 40,000, and then of course, because Warhammer 40,000 is largely random, that it doesn't really make a lot of sense that a, a game where it's largely random and you're playing, you know, tournaments and you're scoring and you're really concerned about who is number one. Well, it's random. So how can you tell who's number one? Because a, a random die roll can achieve the same results as playing a whole bunch of games. Like, that's all it comes down to. So it's largely pointless to be even concerned about, you know, who's the number one Warhammer player. Because it's so largely random. So competitive war, war hammer is largely pointless. Because it's not like chess, where those with the better strategy, the better knowledge of the game, you know will come out on top. And there's really not a lot of luck in chess. Yeah, there is some random elements, but not as much as a game of 40k. A game of 40k is rife with randomness. And I just don't really see the point in getting all worked up. Who's the best army? Who's the best general when there's so many random elements in the, at play in a game? You know? It just does not make a lot of sense to me. Um, Kim, have a look in the Discord general chat to see the pictures on my walls. Uh-uh. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember that. It's the Mickey Mouse skull, yeah, yeah. Oof. Yeah, I just seen the, the box of the Millennium Falcon there for a Lego. Oof. Uh, Sophie, wish they won, uh, wish they won like Legion, you could have a Klingon army fighting Jem'Hadar It'd be great. Yeah, that would be cool if they ever did like a, like a tabletop version of Legion in the Star Wars universe during the Dominion War. That would be fun. Yes, I concur. That'd be cool. That, that, would, be the, that would be a good setting for a massive kind of skirmish kind of game. Um, because you can even do it like the Klingons versus the 
Federation when, you know, the Klingons broke off the treaty with the Federation. Then, of course, you can get into Klingons versus um, Cardassians, Klingons versus, well, basically everybody, Romulans, everybody. And then, of course, you can have the Dominion with Cardassians or without and, you know, fighting it out. I personally, I would rather a Starship game that takes place in during the Dominion War. Because that's just an excuse to have lots of capital ships flying around, shooting at each other, and, you know, mass destruction and ships exploding and, you know, shit like that. As opposed to, like, something with, um, you know, involving, like, the Borg, where it's just one ship against a whole fleet of them, you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of boring. Whereas, you know, if you're playing with, you know, the Dominion versus the Federation, that'd be really cool. Anyway. <laughs> Quiet now. The Batman? Yeah. Did they have the uh, the death metal Batman? Or should like the evil Batman? What's death metal Batman? Alright, so um <laughs> sorry. So so there was a couple years ago there was uh, some comics where um Batman was able to see a parallel, like, universe, where, um, they were basically, and it was space Batman, and that, like, evil, like, dark universe, that, um, I guess you could say, and they were, like, the riders of the apocalypse, but it was, like, Batman and the, the horsemen. So they had, like, the eight rounds. <laughs> They have, they were all these evil people, or evil people, evil people in, um, this alternate, like, Earth, that, uh, were that world version of Batman. So there was, like, the Drowned, there was, um, what was it, the He Who Laughs, which was, like, this, like, necromantic kind of dude who had, um, two Robins on chains, but the two Robins on chains were like vampire imps, they weren't actually like Robins. Oh, I've seen that guy. Yeah. Um, they had Dark Metal Black Batman, which was like an evil knight. Um, and they all worked for uh, that world's like evil god, and they wanted to come to Earth Batman had to, uh, you know, stop them from invading. Sounds interesting. Yeah, and apparently they have models for the Batman and Earth game up there. Pretty freaking cool. Everybody has seen, it feels like, the, um, the He Who Laughs one, Batman, which is, like, this necromantic, like, kind of, like, really, like, shriveled up like Bat he has some Batman with uh, yeah he has like um these like metal cowl over his eyes and he has these two vampire imps dressed like Robins on uh basically dog leashes or chains. As one does.
Um, be -dee -be -doo -doo -be -doo. Sophie, all the different class of starship used in those battles would make a nice collection. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, even um, I know like there was one game. Oh, it might have been the the when that attack wing came out because the starships were you know fairly small, and I know somebody upscaled them so you could use the um, the large uh, Ertl and uh, AMT. Um, models but play the game using attack wings rules so you can use the Enterprise flying around and he's fighting against you know bird of prey and it's you know it's all that but yeah <clears throat> I often thought that the Dominion War would be a good one plus two I'd always like to see like you know the swarms of like the Jem'Hadar fighters would be really cool on the tabletop just for gigs Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Your dad likes Star Trek? He likes Star Wars a lot more. Yeah. Okay, well, your dad your dad your dad sounds like a smart guy, so There were a lot of Star Wars ones. Or well no, there were a lot of like sci fi like Star Trek, Star Wars, the guess and Black Expanse. I hear you. Oh, Battlestar Galactica? Did yeah, you ever... Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, and all of them were the Hallmark ornaments that you could plug into the screen. It had, like, light up and do voice lines and shit. Did you ever watch Battlestar? Uh, a little bit. I know what um, Cylons are. Well, a quick Google search will find that one for you. Well, no, I know what they are from the show. I don't know what the hell up. Um, <laughs> I know they drive... I know what the spaceship... The, the fighters that the humans fly... They look like the white vehicles called. Yeah. Um, my dad even gave me a new Cylon soldier toy robot. Uh, the, the classic I one? I just knew they were in that show, uh, Bad Watch, and they were the cool robot dudes with like guns. <laughs> yeah, Battlestar is a really good show. It's only like five seasons. But it's a really good show. It's not. A, it's not like. It's not like your typical sci-fi show. It's really just more or less the drama between the char characters. But any good. They didn't know he was like a Cylon. Who yeah, it was. Yeah, it's kind of has this long-running uh, mystery of who is who can you trust and yeah. No, it's a good show. Give it a watch sometime. No, no, you can't. I might be a silent. I might be model 13. You never know. Could also be a T3000. Could also be a T3000, that's right. Or a Power Man 5000. Or a Power Man 5000. <laughs> I don't know what that one is. That's a band. He's... I was li I was listening to it before uh, we uh, we came on stream and I I, I jumped into Discord and I had it playing and I forgot it was playing while I was joining Discord so it was probably blasting in fucking uh, barfing sheep's ear but yeah that's what I was listening to at the time. Yeah, I've been looking at uh, like I said the Batman miniatures game. They have a DC miniatures game that has more like like all DC characters not necessarily just Batman. They have like you know Green Lantern. There's one model, well, there's two models I want to get. I want to get the, uh, I think I posted the Discord one, the uh, Wonder Woman, like, diorama base one, where she's, like, in her, like, Greek armor with, like, the helmet and stuff, and standing atop these rocks, like, summoning, like, I guess, magic through her fucking sword. And then, um, there's one where it's Superman, and it's kind of a more basic model. It's not the, the uh, one that's on, like, a central base, but you can... It's the alternate, it's 
the one model that builds three alternate uh, uh, alternate Superman. So you can make like Red Sun Superman. Right. Or That's you can cool. Make the super the Injustice Superman, where now he's taped into the world and turns an evil tyrant. <laughs> right. Or you can build um. It's it's normal Superman, but it's not specific to like specific to a show on it. I just know Red Sun is the communist super, Injustice Superman. Oh, you know the, who the commie is. Yeah, you gotta know who the commie is. <laughs> just enough. Sophie. He literally has a hammer and fist on his chest. Yeah. <laughs> Sophie, I've painted a Space Marine Aeronautica Interceptor as a Viper. Did you? Did you post that on Instagram? Did you subdue? I might, I might have seen that. I might have. If it has a little heart beside it, I probably would have liked it. Although I didn't realize that it was a Viper, though. But now that I think about it, yeah, that the, um, what is it, the Zyphon or Zephon fighters? Yeah, they kind of look like Vipers. I mean, they have, like, bigger wings, but... Yeah. Like well, because, I mean, even Games Workshop doesn't want to get sued, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hucky, hey, loved Battlestar and Starbucks. She's also cool in Longmire. Love the music. Yeah, Longmire, yeah, she's she's good in Longmire. Uh, I liked her in Clone Wars and Mandalorian. She's Bo-Katan. So, yeah. But Starbucks awesome. And she's pain in the ass in Battlestar. Uh, Sophie, yeah, I think it, it's in there. Yeah, okay, I'll have to give it another look. But yeah, I didn't realize that, yeah, you did paint it like a... But now that I'm thinking about that fighter looking like a viper, and yeah, it... How could you not paint it like a viper, really? Because the hull looks very much like a viper. All right. Yeah, I'm happy with the Egrex bringing that overall brown quality back into the wood, separating it from the bronze elements. I like that. I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's on Instagram? Okay, yeah. On Instagram, I was looking at Discord. Oh no, it's in Sophie's uh, Instagram. If you follow Sophie, you have to follow Sophie to, f to get Sophie's pics. We are going to add just a little bit more Ushabti bone to our mixture here. And I'm just going to do a final highlight on the wood elements just to pick out some of the corners and such. Let's go with a little bit more there. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's throw another little dollop in into our mixture here. What color are we getting? I have no fucking clue. It's an off gray. It's a warm gray. Is it a vibrant gray? <laughs> I don't know if everybody's up to date on the whole Cal railgun thing. Well, um, I don't know. The railgun update for the hammerheads for Cal. Yeah, what, it, what's to be up to date about? Um, somebody took a meme from uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail with the killer rabbit, but they replaced the killer rabbit with the Cal hammerhead. And they replaced the lines they talked about referring to Cal being like, because you know how, like, before they go up to the killer rabbit, they're like, oh, the killer rabbit, oh, it's the rabbit, it's weak, it's stupid, all that crap. Yeah. One rabbit just keeps coming right up. So they replaced all the rabbit with messages of cow, and the clunk just keep coming right up. And they walk down, they just, like, put it in blasts instead of all. <laughs> <laughs> it's pissed the bunny. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that the railgun, I don't think that's a huge issue. Um, it's not, because it's still on a tank, that tank chassis that's relatively... Bushy. Yeah, and it, it's a, it's an almost two hundred point model, and it only gets to shoot it once. Basically. Yeah. Well, I thought that I thought the Tau Hammerhead had that rule, like the Lehman Russ and the Fire Prism, where it stood I still, it could fire it twice. Has the Lehman Russ rule. What? I don't think it has the Lehman Russ rule. Yeah, I thought it did though. In the last Codex, if it sat still, it could shoot twice. Oh well, the Lehman Russ rule 
they can't, the women wrestle the breeze and shoot twice. They just can't, they have to be like on their own timer. Oh. Yeah, I thought there was some silly ass rule where it can sit still and it can shoot twice. Not that it really matters, but. Period one now, so just instantly. It's not exactly finishes, but you can move a little bit and still shoot. It's like half your time. Your time is just. Yeah, if you if you move under half the, the movement, it just kind of yeah, sideways, it's not like grinding or something. Okay. But that is unique to the women wrestling. There could be a rule for the the cow uh, hammerhead where it gets the strip between still will fight fire twice, but the uh, women wrestling it, it can move. It's just but the officers have that. And the older groups you can move. Nope, it doesn't fire twice, it just fires once. So. Oh, yeah? Okay. But it benefits from, it's a hover tank, so it's constant firing, so it just goes over. And it can fire at later ones. Yeah, I'm not sure why anybody's freaking out about it. Because it's not like these things. Yeah, but Tau are all about big gun. Because they only showed, they went rail gun, and then they only had a profile. It didn't have like Grand Prix Team style like Tau was. It just said rail gun, that line. So I'm wondering if it lost its other hammer type. That'd be crappy. You had, you know, like normal rail gun shot was what you saw everybody. Freaking out about was the one shot Grand Prix tank, but they had a submission shot that for like uh, you know big squads of fifteen or twenty people using there. It looks like it may have lost that rule. It still has all like the burst scanners and stuff on it. So I, I would imagine maybe they're going to change the ion plan to be the uh, you know you take a weapon option you either put it against something here or put it against. Making what? Coquitos. Uh, it's this Puerto Rican drink, and it's basically coconut eggnog. You take out the it, it's um, yeah, basically coconut eggnog. It's just you know, eggnog is made with eggs. It's made from coconuts, and you use a uh, rum instead of well, regular eggnog. You use this, so it's just coconut. Coquito also translates to little coconut. Yeah, I would say that the wood has been the hardest part of this model. It's been the hardest? It's the hardest wood, yeah. Okay. Did you find it in the morning? Yes. Yes, I did. Morning wood is best wood. It is strongest wood. We're talking about the same thing, right? Yeah, sure.
base here. Gonna have to attach him to his base soon enough. Gotta finish this hand, finish his claws, finish these things. I was thinking even doing up some sort of like swampy ass base for him as well. I have to do something like that for him, I think, eh? What can we do for a swampy base? Bust out maybe the cork. Raise up the base a little bit. Create some little divots or something. Kind of tempted to tear him off the handle right now. No, we're not done yet. Start bubbling away on the uh, on the idea of what I'm going to do for that base. Bubbling away. A whole bunch of moss. A whole bunch of moss. Yeah. Could. It's a possibility. A deceptively deep moss. What would be deceptively deep? <clears throat> I think it's. I think it's a. Some. Yeah, my brain's not working. You know, when you walk around in marshlands and suddenly you're like, oh, okay, I can step on this. This looks solid, and then you just sink into the moss. I, I get that, but how do I, I convey that? I don't know. Gotcha. Tell deep. <laughs> this is deceptively deep. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's no deception. If you're just this flat out telling people. Deceptively. Or is, because you're telling people, that's the deception. Good talk. <laughs> uh, Sophie, couple of fallen tree, de uh, dead trees, some swamp water and rock area he'll be stood on. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking. I'm thinking something like, almost like a bog, where you kind of have like that raised ground, it's all grassy, and yet it kind of drops off suddenly, and you have pockets of water. That's what I'm thinking of, like a bog. He's a bog gator, pig, pig bog gator. He's a tobogganist gator. Oh, jeez. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think a nice boggy swamp is in order. Does anybody out there make cattails? Like model cattails? Yeah, like like model cattails. Does anybody make those? Like basic material? I don't think I've ever seen any other than the plastic one you that you put on there. Yeah. In that kit. Because now I'm thinking that if I'm going to do a bog, I think I definitely want some cattails. Like a few. You can easily make them. Easily, he says. Yeah. Okay. Well, lay it on me, man. Get some green stuff. Get sculpting. Green stuff, get sculpting. That's your advice. You could even use... Uh... Thin paper clips for the stalks, or you can use, um, it's a type of wire, it's kind of like rigid, you can bend it, but, oh. Like florist wire? That, or whatever they use pussy ties for, for like bread. Hmm, gotcha. Okay, I hear you. And then you just take green stuff, and you make like the little, like, Forbidden sausage on the end of it, <laughs> or the forbidden hot dog on the end of it, and then uh. <laughs> why? Why is it forbidden sausage? You bite into it, and then you know it fucking expands in your mouth. <laughs> okay but it's still like i don't understand why it's forbidden sausage why it gets the title forbidden sausage like well it's the forbidden hot dog right? like are, are we talking are we talking about penis in the mouth again no always it's cattails are the forbidden hot dog they're the forbidden hot dog i've just never like, never in my life like, heard that we had this conversation like a week ago, just like uh, Finnish anti-tank mines are the forbidden tuna. Yeah, I remember the forbidden tuna, but how is it the forbidden hot dog? Because it's shaped like a hot dog. There's lots of things that are shaped like hot dogs. And people eat it for, for the funny meme on uh, Instagram, and then they realize that they can't get it, all that crap out of their mouth. <laughs> we're, we're, we're still talking <laughs> about cattails, right? They can't get all that one. <laughs> but all the models they look at. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <For fuck's sake. laughs> what are you making? Cattails? <laughs> it's the forbidden cattail. <laughs> I hear you. You're talking about the forbidden cattail. I'm talking about the forbidden hot dog. Oh, the f <laughs> fuck. I got confused. <laughs> Disflux. <laughs> What's that? The hot tub giveth and the hot tub taketh away. Oh yeah. There is there is also a meme where somebody put like a hot iron rod like straight out of the forge onto a hot dog bun and it's like the forbidden hot dog. Oof. You, you hurt somebody like that. <laughs> Disflux. Does Chris want a cattail with or without the butt plug? <laughs> with butt plug always. What are we talking? Like, is that even a question? I mean, painting handle. Hey yo. The uh, cat, the cat ear headband. The what? The cat ear headband. Oh. <laughs> you extend the cat tail with butt plug. Yeah. Yeah. And then cat ears headband. Gotcha. Yeah. And the choker with the heart on it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I mean, I'm not gonna kink shame you, Chris, but It sounds like you're all kink shaming me is what is what I'm hearing. I'm hearing nothing I don't know but what you're shame. Adding to this list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving you ideas, right? I'm not gonna kink shame you, Chris. Yeah. Oh. All I wanted, damn it, was an idea on how to achieve miniature cattails on a base. The, the and rigid the rigid thin metal wire that they use for like pussy ties like that and then green stuff to make the little like fucking seed pod thing that's a lot of work the forbidden, the forbidden yeah but we'll... <laughs> it can't be like it's a lot of work well by the time he finds somebody who makes them for bases orders them and it gets to their house he could have fucking made them and put them on his <laughs> right but I mean like if, if somebody makes them you know what I mean like if a company like Woodland Scenics already makes them mm -hmm. 
and they look the part, I'll get those. I was just curious if there was. Fuck, everybody started kink shaming me. Everybody jumped on the fucking beat up on Chris fucking bandwagon. Because Chris is a fucking weirdo. Excuse the shit out of me. Hey, dude. If I enjoy butt plugs, hobby. fuck. There are a bunch of train hobby uh, stories starting up here. Is there? I'm looking at JPP scenery, products, gardening plants, cattails, O scale, H O scale. It's high level H O. Yeah. Po post post a link. I'll have you look. Cause yeah, cause if somebody makes cattails, then yeah, I'm definitely gonna fucking pick that up. Cause. That's easier, because I think, I'm like, I'm thinking, like, a few of them poking out of the base kind of thing, right? Like, if, if I want, like, a really good bog kind of thing. Holy Link, Batman. Yeah, the Link is fucking huge. Yeah, no shit. I can see it right now on Discord. There's two of them. There's H.O. and O. Link. Yeah, I'll have a peek. But, yeah, because I kind of figured, like, fucking Woodland Scenics has probably done it. Woodland Scenics has pretty much made miniature versions of everything in the world. Well, train, train hobby, like companies that make stuff for the train models, cars. Yeah. That's why I went like, oh, I'm not going to look up miniature company or miniature basing material cattails. I looked up train cattails. Train your cattail. Right. It's a bit smaller diameter. I wasn't expecting you to roll my eyes. They're judging me after three. <laughs> no, they're judging me. Everybody fucking tries to kink shame me for some reason. See, you do not kink shame me. You remember the first thing I did when I came on in Discord? Mm. Fucking send you a link to a D20 butt plug. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe, Chris, maybe, maybe you should stop being a weird. <laughs> that's kink shaming. <laughs> that that's the definition of kink shaming. I didn't say I wasn't kink shaming. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say I wasn't. Shaming me, just because I'm a, a bit of a connoisseur of butt plugs, you know, uh, I get labeled as some sort of fucking weirdo. Yeah, keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> But telling you doesn't make it your business. Yeah, because now I know. You, yeah, now, <laughs> you, know. now you know. <laughs> That's all it means, is now you know. It doesn't, doesn't mean you get to chime in like... Ever, ever heard the acronym TML? <laughs> Never. No. I don't believe in TML. <laughs> Well, I'm sure there's, you know, some people out there who are just as concerned. Yeah. Do they actually know who the fuck you are? <laughs> well, that I don't know, but anyway. Post on Twitter, it's everybody's business. True. Looking for some, uh, you know, dishwasher safe butt plugs. <laughs> Disflux. I've never used nilic oxide on silver metals before. It looks pretty cool the way you use it. Uh, here, I didn't use it on silver. It's actually on top of a bronze. I actually went 
Warp Lock Bronze, then Sotec Green, then Nelic Oxide, and then a quick dry brush of Psychorex Bronze. And that's how I get this metal look. And I did that for the plate, for the chains, for the cages. Every metal bit is done the same way. There is no silver on this, even on the wrist. Like on the wrist chains or anything? Yeah, it's all bronze. Uh, oh, it doesn't look bronze on my monitor. Yeah, it, it could be just probably because there's so much blue in the background that it, you know, it kind of ruins the the overall look. Of, well, he's falling over. That's why. <laughs> I was like, why is why is he constantly moving? Yeah, I've, I've disturbed him a few times now, and now the the sticky tack is starting to let go in places. I mean, he still hangs on, of course, but yeah. Anyway. But yeah, it's a, it's a bronze. It's an aged bronze that I'm going for here. Just so it kind of looks like rusty metals and, you know, what have you. But yeah, I don't I don't think we used any regular metals, right? Like silver? It's all been bronze? Yeah, because just because I wanted something different um, to go along with the skin. Because I wanted the skin to be what really draws the eye in. Him having this very light, light skin value. And then, of course, the darker cloth and the dark wood. And then the mid-tone uh, metals just to draw the eyeballs in. And, of course, once we get to the rider, the rider will be very light-skinned as well. But he'll have uh, darker elements on him. I'll probably do him with proper metals, kind of rusty kind of things, possibly. I might, might go with bronze. Don't know. Maybe copper. Who even knows? But yeah, I've been having fun with this guy. We've really taken our time on this piece. I don't even know how many hours. Does anybody even know how many hours we've spent I working on this? No. No, I do not. No, I have no idea either. All I know is we've been working on this for like pff, six weeks, seven weeks. Quite a few weeks, anyway. It's been fun, though. It's been a journey. It's been a process. And I think we're almost done with the pig gator himself. I think once I... Once I start working on his base, I'll clear off his feet and everything, where I'm going to mount him. And then, yeah, we'll finish off his fingernails and his, you know... And I'm still not happy with the quills, so I, I kind of want to, I think, go brighter, I think, with them. So, yeah. Did you say it was an unexpected thing? Um, yes. It was unexpected. And it was a journey. I'm going to look at Brandon a little bit. Yeah, I get it. Because we're... Cause... That's what they do by journey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Sophie, I bet Chris is into all sorts of kinky things. I, I think you're projecting now, Sophie. No, my kinks are pretty pretty tame. <laughs> yeah, Chris just does the cat tail butt plug and the cat ears. He doesn't actually do that. Yeah, there's nothing weird about that. <laughs> it's socially acceptable to do these things to start making animal noises. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. What time we at? Holy carmolies! Seven minutes past our time. We're seven minutes OT Whoa. here. Seven minutes OT. <laughs> Is there a game tonight? Yeah, if anybody's playing tonight. It's Thursday, right? Or is Thursday night done? Nobody's playing. No, nobody's playing? Okay, then. Well, I guess I'm going to watch a movie then. Yeah, we're sports. I'm aware of it. We were Formula One. <laughs> what? <clears throat> the only sport I'm aware of, or uh, I say no shit, is Formula One. Oh. Yeah, I don't do racing. 
I don't get the fire. I don't either, but this this hits different for some reason. Formula? Yeah. I mean, it's it's cool and all. <coughs> oh, yeah. oh, that's YouTube again. Well, I think. Yeah, there's no more. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's it for the pig gator for now. I just got to finish off highlighting the wood. That's it. Some other odds and ends. Oh, I got to do a little threads here on the pillow. All right. I never really did touch the red elements on the thing I think the red I think what I'm going to do is I think the red on his like cloth under his armor here I think that's going to be red maybe his leg too or his pants whatever it is fuck yeah I think that'll be a deep red then the armor Metal, red and metal with the green, the light green, that might work. Similar kind of driftwood on a staff. I kind of want to do a bronze for the grabby claw thing though, and same with the metal claw. Yeah, I can kind of see it. big face yeah yeah I think I want to go with a similar kind of vibe with his skin as we did with the pig gator so instead of the pig gator just simply being that off light skin tone right we went pretty bright we went with the magenta values and the cyan values to you know change the skin up a bit and i think we'll do the same thing with the orc himself he'll be greens but i think we'll shade and uh you know highlight him in different values because yeah i think i'm gonna go with a kind of an albino orky kind of vibe to him whatever an albino orc is i have no idea pale green what would be in what would be in the shadows of a pale green as, as far as green flesh is concerned thoughts Take a good old uh, feathery reichland reichland flesh shade in the in the shadows is <coughs> it more like a familiar fleshy look Push his skin towards more of a, like warmer values, yeah. Yeah, while keeping it green. You don't need to be green. Was that a Kermit impression? Yeah, it was. Kermit the mm. Frog. <laughs> hey, how Kermit the Frog, dear? My Kermit still needs a lot of work. I was never really a Kermit guy. I was more of a uh, Cookie Monster guy. A what guy? Cookie. Cookie Monster. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's coming along. He's coming along. Alrighty. Boop. Any last words of wisdom? Got nothing. Nice. Sheep, what do you got? Uh, gotta do the skeleton, I think. Yeah, you gotta do the skeleton. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Take us out. Take us out, skeleton. <laughs> take care of your brushes and they'll take care of you. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good. That's perfect. I, I, man, I, I should have recorded that and I can just use that every time. Well, it's on Twitch now. <laughs>
It's on Twitch now, yeah. It's you're out there. Stream tomorrow. That will be the last time someone can say Shade you're not. Oh, yeah, that's 2022, right. 22, he needs to come up with a new saying. <laughs> <laughs> he says to shed your arse. Your arse? <laughs> your bum. <laughs> your chocolate starfish. Well, that's a very specific part of the bum. Yeah. <laughs> if you got hair there, you probably... Good. Harry Starfish? Put some nair up there. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, that's, that's gonna hurt, dude. Mind you, I mean, like, I don't know who's actually going in there with a razor, but, yeah. Yeah, if you put the razor, the razor up there, you gotta stick fucking nair up there. Yeah, I kind of would go with the nair route. Oh, no, it's, it's typically waxing, isn't it? It's waxing? Huh? Isn't it typically yeah, waxing? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's Kim. Yeah, Who's remember to shave your head. Somebody's got a fucking pool. I mean. True. Who <laughs> comes out with my street? <laughs> Phone a friend. <laughs> Phone a friend. <laughs> the stream's supposed to be ending here and fucking still carrying on a conversation. Yeah. Okay, let's end it there. <laughs> Who? Kim says, always with a straight razor. Jeez. And he doesn't use a mirror. He just goes by feel. <laughs> when you know, you know. He's like the blind dude from uh, Rogue One. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's in there. Alone with the horse. <laughs> the horse is <laughs> 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 just blading out his arse. Oof. <laughs> that that is some Jedi level shit right there. To be sure. <laughs> to be sure. Oh, Sophie says, "Be good, and if you can't be good, be safe." And if you can't be safe, don't stick your dick in it. Oof. There we go. All right, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs>